Hi guys, um, back at the Pike plays again. Um, what we're going to do tonight is uh, an upside down Pike play. And the reason for that is the same as our standard Pike plays, but obviously tied upside down. And uh, for use with these, Chebrushaska, I think it is. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But uh, these weights have a little wire insert into them and you can put that then onto your fly push this thing on through the slot and you'll end up with a, a weight so you can cast the fly you attach your, your trace to that and then uh, that should keep your fly upside down and on the bottom and as I said the fact that this is removable as opposed to a jig head means that you could vary the weight of it uh, to suit your own conditions so we're going to tie a perch uh, style pattern here so I have a Sukuma Manta Extra in here this is a 5-0 we're going to use our gel spun thread to wrap that up and down good and tight to give us a, a base to start with and then a bit of super glue so now what I want to do is create a little dubbing ball at the back here now what this is or what color it is is kind of irrelevant don't don't get caught up too much in that because it's going to be you'll hardly see it in fact you won't see it because it's in the middle of the whole tying uh, I'm using a bit of uh, obviously orange sparkly dubbing. So, what we're going to do now is use a bit of olive deer hair, bucktail, bucktail. And we're going to use this little ball that we created to flare that. So, two options here. You can tie it in that way, fold it back, actually three options. Tie it in this way very short and it'll splay. Or what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tie it in with maybe what an inch or so of these butt ends sticking out that way. When I pull that, the whole thing will flare. And the little uh, ball at the butt here that we created will help to display it even more. So you could trim this off, but what I'm going to use it for is fold it all back, tie a sort of a bung up to the back of it here, and this will give us a bit of extra support for the other materials that we put on. So as and always with my pike fly tan, I like to glue it all as we go because pike got sharp teeth. So next we're going to use a bunch of mixed tinsels in a sort of an olive green, gold, orange mixture. I take a hank of that and then I start to pull fibers out and throw it back against itself. I'm just misaligning the tips so that we end up with a bunch that's about half as long again as we started with but it has a taper so you just if, I, if you get bunches of fibers that are all stuck together you just pull them out and lengthen them a little bit and you end up with this let's say double tapered bunch so we set that on just in front of our bunch of bucktail that we tie on get a loose wrap around it and once you sort of sort of half tighten that in you can pick the fibers out make sure that it's the whole way around the shank once you're happy that it's sort of splayed the whole way around just fold all this back and again get a bit of a thread bung in front of it. You can tie over it if you want, that'll clamp it down more. So I'm trying to get, keep the 
air in it, I suppose we'll say. So, once that's in place, again, take our glue and just glue that tie, tie in point there. I'm going to hold it sort of back on itself a little bit till it starts to set. You can leave it uh, quite circularly round or you can squash it so that you get a, a flatter profile of a, of a fish if you want. Right, that tied in. Next one I'm going to do is tie in a little bunch of mixed Icelandic sheep hair. Uh, and I've mixed a tan, a sort of a bright olive, even chartreuse, and a, a little bit of black. I sort of combed them into each other with one of these dog combs. So put the bunches together and sort of comb it and see it'll splay all these. So, set them on, butt portion first. Tie that in again so that it splays around our shank and then splay it all out and fold it back. Again, glue it in position. So I like a little bit of Mirage Crystal in the fly, so you take a few strands of that, double them over, cut them off and misalign one of the bunches against the other and then tie them in halfway along there length, fold this to the other side, tie that in, it'll give you sort of like a scaled effect. So that's the sort of profile of our fish. Now what we're going to do is bulk it up a bit. So what I'm going to use is a sort of olive mix that I've created of uh, Connectalon fibres. And we're going to set that on. We're probably getting progressively shorter in the bunches that we're putting on because I want the bulk to build up at the front but leave me this long taper at the, at the back. So again, splay that out, fold it back. and tie back up to it and glue it in place. Right, so up to this point the fly is kind of neutral whether it's you know this way up or that way up. Uh, so at this point we're going to change the orientation of the fly to create the back of the fly here where the hook is and the belly of the fly on the top. So I'm going to put a white belly in. So again I have a bunch here of my uh, Connectalon fibers or pike fibers or whatever you're using. And I'm going to lay that in on top of the hook which will conversely become the belly of the fly. And for the back of the fly I'm going to use sort of a darker tan Coloured bunch of fibre. Again, always misalign that little bit. I'll flip the hook over, tie that in on the underside of the hook, but as we said, the back of the fly that we're creating. Spin that back and then fold these two bunches. Back and stuff. Now I don't want them to mix, so I'm sort of just being a little bit more careful as I fold them back to keep them basically up and down. So we get a bit of a 
tie-in thread built in the front of it. As you can see, there's actually a gap here between the bunches, you know. Um, and the reason for that, you see now, again it separates the two colours out, gives me the dark of the back and the light of the belly. And glue that in position. And now, in that gap, I'm going to put a little bit of orange fur. Now, again, you can use whatever orange stuff you want. As I said, if you've got orange fibre to hand, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Arctic Fox body hair. Use red as well if you want, given that it's a perch. Uh, so I'm taking that bunch and I'm going to split it in two. I'll set one bunch down here. Take this other one. I'm just going to set it in that little gap, tie it in place. And the fact that this is still a little bit wet with the super glue will help it to just fix in position there for me. So flip it over, set this on top, and tie that one in. So there's one on each side. Alright, two more materials for this fly. Uh, so we're going to put in a bit of white craft fur. This is a pillow that I found, one of these shaggy pillows, but it has a really good quality white craft fur. Cut a lump off it. Pull out the short stuff at the bottom. Set that in position, tie it down. Now what I'm going to try to do is not to go too far forward towards my eye because I think it helps you when you're uh, finishing the head. Uh, and then we need some black for the head of the fly, which I seem to have misplaced. So I'll be back in a second. So for the lack, I'm using this, well, it was some sort of a woman's coat from whenever this was in fashion, whenever the hell that one was, I suppose. So, cut a bunch of that off. Same thing again. Strip out the very short stuff. Load of lad bulk, it just makes it a bit more difficult to tie in here. So once I've got all that bunched, pulled out, I will flip my fly over, place that on the top, and again I'm trying to keep the definition between the black and the white. So before I set it in place, I'll just make sure I have it pulled. Right, fold all this. So the idea is that we'll see our little streak of uh, thin through this. Finish that off. I'm just going to brush that out. I'm happy with that. I will just hold it in position so I've squashed it a little bit flat ways. And then I will take my super glue and just super glue is sort of the first 5mm or so. And then as that dries, we can decide on the shape of the fly. So you want it big and bulky, leave it sitting out like this. If you want it tighter, pull these in, up to yourself. So 
So, fly is tight and we'll fish this way around. More for you. So what we need now is to put some stripes on it. So we're going to use these Pro markers. Um, and I'm, you'll not see me doing it on this side because what I'm doing is just stroking down with this green one. And I'll flip it over and do the same at the same point level with it. On that side. You might be able to see that shining through there. And then take a burnt sienna. Is like a dark brown, and I'll go in front of the green stripe. And the same on this side. And then we take the black and create because the parts you want a fairly well defined black stripe and I'm sort of putting this in between the red and oh sorry the brown and the green it'll meld into them and should I think give you a bit more natural looking stripe it's the messy part of so that's our fly tied, it's upside down, so I'll flip that over for you so you can see what we have. So you can get this onto the bend of the hook so you can get an idea of the fly. hook is in here. As you can see the material sort of covers it up and that'll help it be a little bit uh, weedless I suppose to a certain degree. And what we need now is to add eyes to this. So there's a variety of different ways of adding eyes. Uh, straight glues, uh, epoxies. What I'm going to do is epoxy these on so I'll take my um, two part five minute epoxy here and put out a little blab of it. And I take a cocktail stick and mix the two parts together. Now I'm mixing them together on just a little posted page here uh, out of shot. Once I've it mixed together, I use the cocktail start stick and I sort of twizzle that until I get a blab of it. And then I will stab that with the cocktail stick into the dressing, just up at this point where I want the eye to be. And that just gives me a, a solid base down into the dressing to keep the eye in position. And then I'll take one of these. These are probably 9mm. I would say red eyes, stick that in too. My glue, so I get a little bleb at the front of it and then I'll just push it down into it. And that is what our fly is going to look like. I will do the other one on this side. Thing. Take the eye. Try and get a little bit over to you so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm sticking the point of the eye like that into my blab of glue. And then I'll slide the eye forward once it's caught that lip of glue into my blob and push it down into it. And that just a little lip of epoxy on the uh, on the eye itself. I think 
stops it delaminating. Gives you a bit more security. Might not look as nice, but no point if it only looks nice for a short period of time and then falls apart. So now what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of the epoxy that's left and I'm almost going to, as if you were varnishing the head of a normal fly, put a little lip of that around the front of it and make sure that it joins to the bit that blebs over the start of the eye. And that is our upside down perch tied for uh, chub weights. Let's see we have one over here that we did earlier. So we have a little shoulder of them going. So we then take our chub weight put it through the eye of the fly. And add the weight. Sure. I'll set this one out of the way. You need to sort of twist just so that the uh, glue doesn't settle. So I'll set that out of the way and attach a trace. The front of that, and as you can see, then that will you cast this out obviously using the weight of the jab, and then that allows you to alter your weight and keep your fly generally swimming in that upright position. So, thanks for watching. Tight lines, tell your friends, share, <laughs> copy, whatever. Uh, so, until next time, tight lines. Thanks for watching.